this is really huge. It will really literally shape our lives for probably in the next decade or more. We found that, you know, people who survived the acute episode of COVID after 30 days, some of them develop acute kidney injury. Some of them develop EGFR decline, which is sort of a marker of kidney function, meaning that kidney function is declining over time. Some of them develop end-stage kidney disease, not huge numbers, but an important number, meaning they need to be on dialysis or require kidney transplantation. What's really problematic about kidney disease is it's really silent doesn't really manifest in pain or any other symptoms. Over that, that baseline, there is a 23% increase in, in the risk of AKI. In people who are not hospitalized at baseline and did not have any kidney problems in the first 30 days. So these people literally like thought, you know, they have no problem, you know, everything is good. 30 days went by, I mean, they recovered, they quote unquote recovered from COVID. But then over time, they're actually exhibiting increased risk, 23% increased risk of, of acute kidney injury. Within sort of the global context of thinking about, you know, COVID and all the ramifications of COVID, this is sort of an added concern that if this is really, you know, happening at a wider scale and, and, and we think it is, you know, it's just a matter of time before like we see all of these people hitting the clinics, needing dialysis, needing kidney transplantation. The people on dialysis don't do very well. Annual mortality in people on that is 20%. You know, the numbers may look small, but this is not a small number if you multiply it by the huge number of Americans and, and also globally who might be ending up with end-stage kidney disease or MAKE or AKI. So this will certainly add, add burden on, on the healthcare system.